Okay, the white boots are coming off. Y'all get ready. And the knee boots are coming on because we gone bank fishing, trying to catch me some perch, as we call them. We call a small brim or a bluegill or a sunfish. We call them all a perch. I've come now later in life to call them brim and try to identify them by species, but we going perch jerking as they would call it. And what I got here is a big bag, a two gallon size Ziploc bag of earthworms that I found at David's house when we were on the turkey hunt. David had pulled up this rug that was on his patio and earthworms were all over underneath it. David wanted to rinse them off. I said, wait, 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 wait. And I went and grabbed all the earthworms, got them into a bag, got some of that beautiful red Tennessee dirt. I am here in beautiful St. Bernard Parish. This is a nice little public spot that anyone could come and fish. As long as you have a rod and reel, you can come do this here in St. Bernard. So let me get out there, see if they're here, and I'll let you know. I'm hooked up. I don't know what I got. It is pulling which is very odd. I don't know. This is odd. What the? Whoa, holy. Are you kidding me? Look at the size of this sunfish. Look at that. All right, y'all, we on the board. I got the crawfish sack. A fish is in the, in the crawfish sack. Just need a few more at that size. Dude, that is a big old sunfish. Oh, we catch the little bitty ones? That sucker was a hammer. All right, I'm gonna show y'all my little setup. This is Jack's rod and reel that he caught on a Mardi Gras float. That's right, so we're doing a catch, catch and cook. Because we caught this, we're gonna catch the fish with it and then we'll cook them. Uh, it's just a little, you know, light spinning rod and reel combo. All right, so the cork is a one inch, uh, just clip on cork, and then down to a jig head. We'll start with the jig head, see if they get leery of that. If they do, we'll switch to an Aberdeen. But let's start with this. So another thing I do is I carry a champagne basket, and then I got my crawfish sack to put my fish in, and then I'll just uh, tie off to that and just kind of keep my crawfish sack of fish as a catch, hopefully a catch. But the, crawl, the champagne basket is just an all around thing. I was able to put my worms in there, put my water in there. It's a great way when you're bank fishing to keep a bunch of things and then eventually put your fish or whatever it is you need to put in too. And then I'm hanging a backpack on the tree. That's got some of the camera gear in it. Got my little camera gear tripod. And we're gonna fish right here. Let's see what we get. All right, going back to my little spot over here. Making a nice long cast. Them fish can't hear me. I'm way over here. They can't see me. Brim are pretty, you know, weary. They can, you know, if they see you, that could be it. I'm already getting a bite, y'all. This is awesome. There he is. Dude, I am about to put it on them, y'all. Caught up in a little grass. Uh, not as big as I thought initially, but still a fish. That's the ones I'm used to catching. All right, so that one for sure is a bluegill. They're biting, I gotta stay on them. There he is. That seems to definitely be the hot spot. Uh, feels like another good one. Yes, sir, it sure is. That's a bluegill. Big old bluegill. Big old bluegill. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Get him off, get another worm out there, y'all. All right, so I did get off the jig head and I went to a six, size six Aberdeen hook with no weight. So it's gonna look real natural on that's probably, I'd say that's, I don't know, seven, eight pound monofilament. It came on the rod, so I don't know for sure, but that's about what it feels like. And then just a little cork, foot and a half. Now, here comes where I need the experts to weigh in. What is the perfect way to hook an earthworm onto a hook? What's your best way to do it? I normally do one towards the top, one towards the middle of the worm, and then one towards the end. So I've been through three times, but I wanna know what's your favorite way to hook an earthworm. Is there an art to it? Is there a science to it? Is there a perfect way to do it? Let me know. Most of the time, 
they're gonna bite within the first minute. So if I don't get a bite within the first two minutes, I'll reel in and try something else. But right now, that spot right there seems to be getting the most bites. All right, getting a bite. Let's see if he stays with it. It's very possible he could have got my worm on that one little bite. Yes, he's acting like he already got it. So I'm gonna reel in and check it. All right, and he did, he got it. So if you see like a little bite, your cork, boom, goes under real quick and then they don't come back, typically they got your worm. So reel it in, put your another one on. There he is, y'all. All right. There's a little guy, we're gonna put him back. <laughs> oh man, so fun, another good size one too. Big, beautiful red ear. Look at that, huh? Man, man, the size is so nice out here. Just a public park. It's a public little place you can come, bring the kids, bring a lawn chair. Got plenty of shade. You see it here. All right, y'all. Now, the place I'm fishing at today is called the 40 Arpen Observatory. You could find that by typing it into Google, but it is located in St. Bernard Parish. Easy to find. If you have any questions, send me that email, outside the levees at gmail.com. I want you to come. Make sure if you are coming and you're planning on coming from out of town, reach out to me first so I can just give you a little bit of an update on the time of year. I'm in the springtime right now. I would imagine this would be good most of the spring and summer, but these fish are fired up. They are here. Y'all need to come catch them and come check out this beautiful place called the 40 Arpent Observatory in St. Bernard. Go to visitstbernard.com to plan that trip. Come see us, y'all. That's a good one. They're taking it a little funny. Just a beautiful red ear. Gosh, they got some nice size to them, huh? Look at that. Yeah, like, I'm getting a bite now. So if you cast to a spot and don't get a bite almost immediately, uh, leave it out to, you know, no more than two minutes and then get it in another spot. Because what's happening is I think after you catch a few in a spot, they get a little weary and they don't bite. So move on to another spot and then work your way back to the spot where you had to leave. But I would not let it sit out there just the way they're biting right now. I wouldn't let it sit out there very long because uh, you probably need to reel in and cast to another, another spot. Got it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Y'all, they are so freaking nice. I can't take it. Look at that. They all bigger. Look, let me show you. That's my hand. <laughs> I mean, come on. Got it. Ah, look who showed up. Look who just showed up. The Rio Grande Cichlid. These guys got out of people's aquariums and now they live all over South Louisiana, including many of our parks, drainage canals, bayous. They're here to stay. So guess what? Just like we do with most invasives, we turn them into food. All right, now if you do come, wear you some boots. That's how money I got getting down there by the bank. You may have your line get tangled up. You're gonna have to walk through the mud at some point, so wear some boots. At the very least, wear some old shoes. Uh, I think it's another cichlid. It is. Can't put him back. Even though he's small, it is against the law for me to put this back into our waters. That is mandated by our wildlife and fisheries. They are responsible for managing the wildlife and they say cichlids cannot be in our waters. So I gotta do something with them. I don't know if y'all can see, look at the beautiful markings on that fish. 
but I cannot put him back, so maybe we'll turn him into catfish bait. Okay, so this is the pier at the 40 Arpent Observatory, okay? You can fish here, you can launch a kayak here, paddle around. This is called the 40 Arpent Canal, okay? It's a drainage canal, but maintained very well through a series of pumping stations like that and loaded with fish. I know my buddy was saying he caught them right here. This is a great place to come. I mean, look at the beautiful shade you got. You can set up some chairs, throw out a dauber with a cricket and catch you some brim like I just did. Definitely a cool place to come. There's also this bridge that you can walk over. You can see the wetlands out there. Take in some of that scenery. Beautiful cypress trees everywhere. All right, and here is the little picnic area. This is the area when uh, classrooms come, they have the kids gather around, teach them a few things about the wetlands. That's the, kind of what this is set up for. You know, as a, as a you know, pull up, get out your car and, and go see the wetlands type place. Like I said, it's just a beautiful facility. They did an amazing job with it. And I was fishing right out here, y'all. How about that, huh? You could come, catch you a couple fish, have a picnic. I'm telling you, don't sleep on St. Bernard. Come see us, y'all. There's another good one. How about that? So like I said, this is the 40 Arpent Observatory in Chalmette, Louisiana, which is a part of St. Bernard Parish. You come down here, get you some earthworms, bring you a little lunch, a little something to drink on, and catch you some brim some perch, whatever you call them. You could call them whatever you want when you come here to St. Bernard, we won't judge. We'll see you when you come. Now I'm gonna have to show y'all some St. Bernard inspired ways to cook these. All right, folks, there's our beautiful filleted up perch. Get you a good sharp knife so you can get in there, not tear those fish up and get you a good fillet off of them. When you're catching them at that size, as big as your hand, you can definitely cut them down into fillets. So what I'm gonna cook, I'm using some ramen noodles as kind of my base idea. And we're gonna do a little bit of deep frying on the fish, but we're also gonna make a delicious sauce to put this over some noodles with some vegetables. Let's get right into it. All right, first things first, go ahead and get all of your fillets into a nice egg wash. And from your egg wash into some seasoned breadcrumbs. Uh, I would recommend panko if you have panko panko type uh, breadcrumbs, but this is just some seasoned breadcrumbs that we had. It's all gonna be good. All right, my temp gun's showing I'm up to 375, and once I start dropping them, it's gonna go back down. Your small fillets, and they won't take long. Alright folks, fish are done. We're gonna go ahead and make a sauce. Go on top. So that's about uh, a tablespoon and a half of honey. Then you wanna use this spicy chili crisp. Definitely want about two teaspoons of that. Okay. A tablespoon or so of soy sauce and just a little bit of balsamic vinegar, probably about a teaspoon. Okay. Mix that up. And what I do is I give it a little taste test. Mm. Then I take some of my nice, crunchy, and crispy fried up fish. We want to chop that. Okay. And there is my ramen noodles, as well as some stir-fried veggies. Take that fish, just pile it on there. Mm-hmm, yes indeed, yes indeed, look at that. Huh? And take that delicious sauce you just made and spoon it on there, like so. Your sauce is gonna really uh, add flavor to the noodles and the veggies, so don't be afraid to put a good bit. That's why we made it. And that's it right there, folks. And 
And there it is. I mean, we do it right here on Outside the Levees. When you spend some time in St. Bernard, these are the kinds of things that could happen. So please come see us. We would love to have you, but I would also love to try this. Mmm. Mmm. That little bit of honey, spicy from the chili crisp. Mmm. Mm -mm. I wanted to thank y'all again for being a part of what I do week in, week out. Couldn't do it without y'all. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. This is the kind of thing we do all the time and I'm honored that you came to check it out. Mm. See y'all when you get here.